everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Hookup on Music podcast. I am glad that I am here tonight because I have lots and lots to share with you. Um, we are at episode 43, which is pretty cool to say out loud. I like saying that out loud. Um, glad to be here. You know, last week we had a really, really awesome, awesome time with Stoop Kid. If you have not gotten a chance to take a listen to that interview, please go back and listen to that. Um, but let's get started tonight. Got a lot of stuff on the docket tonight. We uh, In a minute here, we're going to get to some concerts coming to town and some new music. And our feature tonight is this Rolling Stones 250 Greatest Guitarist list that has just been just been eating me, oh, uh, uh, just 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 eating me away on the insides. Just just some of the placements and stuff, but we're gonna get to that in a little while. Um, but first, first, some concerts about town. If you happen to be looking for some shows, okay. Uh, tomorrow night, Friday night, and Saturday night at the Chicago Theater. The amazing My Morning Jacket is playing. Um, Thursday night, they're going to be honoring the 20th anniversary of It Still Moves, a really, really awesome album. If you have not checked that out, uh, please do. Um, that's a cool show to go to. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we talked about th this amazing band called Deer Tick. They're also playing Thursday night. Um, seems to be something that you want to catch. Uh, Monday, um, Depeche Mode's playing. All these shows I'm listing are in Chicago, and they all have other dates that could be surrounding your area, or if you're looking for also to travel and see them more than just once around Chicago, you know, I would look into doing that, because you can never go see, you know, too many awesome, awesome shows, to be frankly honest with you. Um, XRT's got their holiday jam going down with Los Lobos on December 8th, um, and they also have Mount Joy will be also part of the uh, Holiday Jam, and that is going to be um, on Thursday, December 28th. So one's on December 8th, and the other one's on December 28th. Um, we're checking out. Lemonheads are coming to town. Um, December 29th, 30th, and 31st at Space. Lemonheads, been a long time since they have come to town. Um, pretty excited a little bit. Um, always excited, but Big Head Todd and the Monsters is coming to town with Cracker. At the Riviera Theater on January 20th. That would definitely be one that I would definitely be interested in seeing. Because you know what? Why not? Let's see some awesome bands team up together. And the Riv, if you have not been there, is an amazing... Well, I don't want to say amazing. Because so I know someone's going to be like, it's not the best. you know. But if you got a good good standing uh, view and you could see a good band like Cracker up close or, you know... Big Head Todd and the Monsters, you know, I would definitely, definitely take advantage of that. Just because, you know, um, why not? Twisted Christmas on the Q101 front is back four nights, December 5th, December 6th, December 7th, and December 8th. December 5th, it's the Black Keys and Local H. December 6th, it's Love Joy and White Reaper. December 7th, it's Bleachers and Mr. Wives. And December 9th, it's Young the Giant and the Gaslight Anthem. Pretty, pretty cool. Um, also, a couple weeks ago, I talked about a newer band called Knuckle Puck. They're coming to town with real friends at the House of Blues. Don't see many shows at the House of Blues too much anymore. Um, but if you do have a chance, go ahead and check that out. I think it might be worth it. Brittany, Mur Brittany Murphy, the actress. Brittany Howard is coming to town um, February 6th and February 7th. And we're going to talk about her in a little while. But uh, she's got a couple shows coming to Talia Hall. That may be worth checking out. As is the Cold War Kids coming to the Salt Shed on February 23rd. But there's always, always good shows coming around town, to your town, here, everywhere. Um, check those out if you get a chance. Um, you might just happen to see some of us down there. Um, and speaking of things that we like to share, we always like to share new music. So every week we're going to have a little bit of a segment called New Music, which here we are. And what new music do we have this week for you? Well, what a better way to kick it off than the Beatles, who are back. Shocking fashion with a brand new song. Okay, the song is called Now and Then. Um, uh, a cool song. 
a cool song. Is it is it top tier Beatles? No. But does it make you feel good if you enjoy the Beatles? I think so. Okay. If you get a chance, check out the music video. Uh, definitely might leave you uh, your heartstrings tugging if you are a Beatles fan. It was cool the way they put it all together, to be frankly honest with you. Um, never really ever decided that uh, this would ever happen. I mean, it's not like, oh, we've been waiting years for this one song. It kind of just kind of popped up. Um what I like about it is that um, you got the new and the old mixing together. You know, it's John's old vocals mixing with, you know, Ringo and Paul now mixing with George before he passed away. And, you know, again, I think it's it really, 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 really kind of ties it together. Um, this is supposedly the end. The uh, We've been told that before, but there's no more. You know, it's not like there are hundreds of hundreds of tapes sitting around which is perfect Lennon vocals that you could put on some music and call it a Beatles um song but again as a fan of the Beatles I could say that it uh was definitely definitely awesome um I definitely think it's awesome that they just kind of were able to 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 make it feel like something that the Beatles would have done and it's not like something like from their early years it's something that Maybe in the, that early 70s, if they were able to get it together and do something, maybe this would have been the something that they would have been doing. Um, not, nonetheless, check out Now and Then. Really, really, really worth it, I think. It's worth um, just giving it the time of day because, you know, it's the Beatles. And speaking of the Beatles, they are on the list. And you're like, what list is that? They're on this guitar list. So again, we start off this list at 250, and you're saying to yourself, who's at 250? Well, that's just who we played right there, Spirits in the Material World, Mr. Andy uh, Summer, who right off the bat, I'm a little shocked that he is um, 250, not because he shouldn't be 250 or there isn't 250 guitars better than him, but just some of the ones that happen to appear ahead of him, the, it kind of it kind of rubs me a little bit, but we're going to... We're going to go through, I mean, Andy Summers is a great guitar player. Unfortunately, we're not going to go through all 250 guitarists because we're only here for about a half hour. So we're going to cover what we could cover, um, talk about what we could talk about. Um, try not to nitpick. Try to look at it through a, a lens of, 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 of amazing guitar player list. But uh, Andy Summer at 250, when you start hearing some of the more that are involved in this, kind of leaves you a little bit like oh well let's see what else we got here you know what i mean let's see what else this list has and right off the bat 249 we just brought her up coming to town talia hall Brittany howard from the alabama shakes 249 uh, don't get me wrong she's a, quite a good guitar player but uh i don't believe that all of um alabama shakes material she was playing the lead guitar which leads us to another question in this countdown um, do you have to play lead guitar to be considered one of the greatest or is it rhythm or is it the writing style of your guitar? I don't know. That's kind of what we're going to keep going and keep moving forward to discuss. But Brittany Howard at 249 kind of could be a little bit uh, confusing, you know, a little bit. Um, but then again, you know, as this list goes, it's just how it how it happens to be, you know, because as you keep climbing down, OK, you know. 248's Robbie Krieger from The Doors, who to me, I grew up listening to The Doors, and I believe Robbie Krieger to be a fine, fine guitar player. Um, you know, I don't, you know, I don't know if that that listing is quality, but 247, Ricky Wilson of the B-52s. Great, great guitar player, awesome guitar player. If you're including Ricky Wilson on this list, again, I'm gonna have to question where some of the placement on some of the other players happen to be. Um you know, but that's this is this is a list put together by a hand picked of people, and this is like their voting. So, like to be frank, it's not like it's millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of people throwing in their their vote and saying, "Oh, you know, here we are. You know, we are here, and we're 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 you know, we got a big chunk of people who have voted to say, well, you know, this is this is solid. You know, 
you know, a lot of guitar players, though, are going to come up on this list that, that are amazing. Um, a lot of guitar players are going to be skipped over and not talked about. I mean, that's pretty much just the way these lists happen to run. Um, you know, you got a guy on here who's really amazing and Steve Hackett, who's a great, great guitar player from Yes. You know, he comes in at 216. But then you go up a little bit higher before you go to 216 and at 228, okay, I, I get a little bit um, confused on this one. And it's Steve Jones of the Sex Pistols. And you're saying to yourself again, is, is this is is he worthy to not only be on this list but to be 228 and to be ahead of two uh, Ricky Wilson and Andy Summer and Robbie Krieger? I, I it's not my place to say because all we're doing here is listening to some of this stuff and and discussing it together, which is exactly what what we're here to do. We're here to talk about it. We're here to break it down and you know that that one kind of a little bit you know sex pistols i do know that they have made their their mark but uh you know you know i don't know i don't know about that placing you know kurt vile who is an amazing amazing uh writer good good guitar player you know he comes in ahead of steve hackett at 215 okay um steve hackett at 215 is kind of like Okay, and then you're like Gary Clark Jr. at 209. Gary Clark, Gary, Gary, Gary Clark Jr. is honestly just just one of one of the 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 most talented um, guitars that 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 I have um, heard in a long time, and just him at 209. When you, I'm sorry, you know, I, I'm not. I, I've heard their music, you know. I, I haven't sat down and studied the guitar, but there's this band Godflesh, you know, with Justin Broderick, you know, coming in at 207. I, you know, I get it. You want to add some metal people? Okay. But uh, just in my guitar playing years, in my metal years, Godflesh is good. I, I haven't been known for them being like just above, above the rest, you know. But when you're going through these lists, that's kind of where you seem to go is that people seem to just say, oh, you know what? We're gonna put these people here. And we're gonna put these people there, and you know, you know that that that's it. I've again listened to lots and lots and lots and lots of music. Okay, um, so it's not like I'm trying to any artist here is a good guitar player, you know, should be included on the list. Okay, and just because I haven't heard them doesn't mean that they aren't good. But Jerry Reed, okay, is one ninety eight. Okay, really, really fine player. I know that. Um, really awesome, eastbound and down, great song. Um, you know, f- some good fiddling. But one ninety eight, better. Jerry, I, I'm sorry, I could be really wrong because I, I do appreciate some 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 good old Jerry Reed. Okay, but Jerry Reed better than Gary Clark Jr. Well, this is what Rolling Stone decided to print, and that's what they put out. And you know it's 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 one of those things where that's why we get to sit here tonight and go through it because someone else came up with it. Um, I just don't think I'd be putting Jerry Reed at, at one ninety eight. Okay, um, I also wouldn't be putting the guitars from Black Flag at one ninety five. Greg Ginn, Jen Ginn. At this point, I'm just a little frustrated at that. Why again? You know, for punk, fine guitar player better than Gary Clark Jr. I mean, I feel like I'm going to keep repeating that better than Gary Clark Jr. I mean, this list, what ends up happening is, is that you got ones that should be higher and you got ones that really, 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 really should, should be lower. Okay. Um, that's, but again, we're, we're, we're going through this together and we're trying to say, well, you know, we're, you know, I get Jerry Cantrell should be on the list, but 189, you know, that seems to be maybe, you know, if you're, if, if you're putting, you know, um, others, you know, there are, there are some people on this that, that really, 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 okay. There's a band called Speedy Ortiz, a little bit of them. Sadie Dupes, fine guitar player, 176. 176 it's like i have to keep repeating that you know 
Rory Gallagher is 175. Rory Gallagher is amazing. He's an amazing guitar player who, honestly, if you listen to guitar players, should be way higher than 175. And definitely shouldn't be with Sadie Dupois, who's, who's, who's a guitar player. You know, Marty Stewart's an amazing guitar player, 174. You know, it's it's Paul McCartney, okay? This is where we start to get a little crazy. Paul McCartney's on the greatest guitarist list. Plays, plays a fine guitar, okay? Does a little solo in at the end of um, the end end of um, Abbey Road. You know, and he did another song, but 173? Blows me away, you know? Blows me away. D. Boone. Awesome they included him. We've talked about him a couple times on here about Minutemen. D. Boone. The D. Boone. Um, love that name. Love saying D. Boone. But D. Boone made the list. So I, I, I do credit them for putting something like D. Boone on the list. Okay. But then, you know, um, you go down to, to 160. Kim and Kelly Deal. Okay. Her post Pixies outfit where she played bass. The Breeders, the guitarist in The Breeders are 160. I like The Breeders. I like them quite a lot. But I can surely tell you um, I'm a little confused at why some of these these are, you know, why is Greg Ginn 195, you know? Why is Rory Gallagher at 175? You know, I mean, you just, it, it blows, it really blows your wig back. Rory, you know. You know, it just, 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 just all the people that could be in a different placing. But again, this is Rolling Stone that we're talking about. So including Paul McCartney on their list and saying, oh, you know, um, we, we, we want to honor Paul. You know, I get it. I get it. But uh, just kind of, just kind of blows my mind. Um, you know, Breeders 160, it blows my mind. Okay. You know, it really, 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 really blows my mind because right after the Pixies, okay, right after the Pixies is John Lennon, who came back for that Now and Then song. Um, I'm sorry, folks. John Lennon is 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 it was was known as a sloppy guitar player, and if he's being rewarded for his sloppiness at 159, I'm kind of curious at why some of these other players higher of them haven't been rewarded for their actually good playing, but. As we must continue down the list, we um, just keep keep shooting and keep going and keep finding more and more things to you know to talk about. You know, one fifty two. You know, you're coming to one fifty two and you're saying the stylings of Ani DeFranco, great songwriter. A lot of good songwriters are on this list. Okay, a lot of good songwriters on this list. Um, you know, you got your Paul Simons, who I didn't bring up, who are in the high, you know, the, the high uh, two two forties, you know. But Annie DeFranco, you know, you know, some people though in this thing, um, you know, as 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 she told acoustic guitar in twenty fourteen, loud against silence makes somebody's conversation at the bar stick out. Um, a unique guitar style. That's what it says here. It Rolling Stone says a unique guitar style. Unique. I gotta keep repeating that. Unique guitar style. Okay. Let's keep let's keep continuing. Okay. Because uh, you know, I don't know why he's even being rewarded. Not to say he shouldn't be on a, the, a list, but uh Ike Turner. Okay. Ike, Ike, okay, Ike 148. Ike Turner 148. All right, Rolling Stone. I get what you're doing here. You're you're starting to make my blood boil. I Turner, fine guitar player again. But Gary Clark Jr. Can you, I want to beat these people who voted that, and we could be in a room, and I can get a straight face on this one. But I probably won't be able to go into the room um, after that. Um, Dimebag Daryl, one of the one of the one of the greatest greatest metal guitar players of all time, is at one thirty one on the list. No, I get it. It becomes a little uh, this and a little bit of that, and a where, you know, um, you know, you got Liz Fair at one thirty-seven, an alternative legend, um, an alternative legend. But uh, one thirty, you know, one thirty-seven, it, it leaves to be desired. Uh, one twenty-nine is Nita Strauss, who did really a fine job 
with Al, playing with Alice Cooper when we when we saw her. Um, just just really, 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 really good on on that part. Um, you know, but as the list is going, you know, you got Peter Buck of REM at 106. Love Peter Buck. Love his strumming. Um, and, and excellent, excellent, like his his vibrato um, uses uses really, 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 really cool um, pedals. It just a just a fine guitar player all around, and I'm glad he was included. I mean, 106, you know, he it seems like a fair place for him, um, you know, which is which is where we want, you know. But Kurt Cobain, 88, is it fair? Are we here for the songwriting, or are we here for the guitar playing? Back to sloppiness. I don't know. Sloppiness in the magic. Is that what it continues into being a, what a good guitar player is? I don't know. You know, I don't know. I don't know. Um, Ernie Isley, who is, to me, one of the finest guitar players, you know, with the Isley brothers, he comes in on this list, you know, at, at, at 79. <laughs> There's just some um, some some stretch in there from uh, from Ernie on, on, on a tune called "Climbing the Ladder." Check that out, and you can't tell me he doesn't maybe deserve to be a little bit higher. But I understand um, where we are in this list and why he is where he is at 79. I do not understand why Sleater Kinney is at 64. Um, Kerry Brownstein, a great 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 player, great 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 band, but 64 confused. P.J. Harvey. Ooh, P.G. Harvey at 49. Hmm. That's confusing to me. At 49, P.G. Harvey. I didn't even know how some of the songs she plays guitar um, on every track, you know, but people are picking it. What can we do? Um, Johnny Ramone. Very, 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 very influential band guitar player. That might be why he is sitting at 44. I don't know about that one. That one might be one up for debate. Jack White, though, 32. Mm, great guitar player, 32. Um, back to my, 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 you know, back to Gary Clark Jr. at 209. You know, they got people on here in a band called Her, a band called El, just some stuff. El Kemper at 26. Just some really, 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 really confusing stuff on this list. You know, but that's, Let's let's be honest. We've talked about it before on the show. We're just here to just kind of go through it and see a little bit of where these these where they place it. You know, I'm glad. You know, I'm glad Curtis Mayfield. They decided to slip him in at 48. The Edge at 47. Zappa at 46. Steve Cropper at 45. But Johnny Ramone at 44. You know, I don't know. The two guitar players in Radiohead at 43, great band. Known a lot more for their electronics, though, um, uh, and their guitar playing. But a little bit of mixture of that um, is where you seem to find yourself, okay? Uh, Clapton, 33. Garcia, 34. Brian May, 33. Okay, all right ahead of Jack White at 32. Don't know if Jack White's that. George Harrison at 31. Uh, Neil Young at 30, um, David Gilmore, you know, at 28, Buddy Guy, 27, new, newer artist, St. Vincent, 26. She's very awesome on the guitar. I'm glad that they included her. Is it too high? That's for you to decide. Um, Prushanti from the Chili Peppers, amazing guitar player at 25. Okay. Um, you know, your Randy Rhodeses and your Albert Kings in the low 20s, should they be higher? They could be. You know, this is a crime right here. I'm sorry. This is a huge crime. Stevie Ray Vaughan at 20? I'm sorry. Why isn't Stevie Ray Vaughan in the, in the top 10? You know, why is he not in the top 10? I just I just can't, 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 can't get it out of, out of my head why he isn't in the 10. But you know what? Maybe somebody saw something that 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 I didn't see, and they did include, you know, Eddie Hazel, you know, Parliament, you know, but Steve Ray Vaughan, twenty. I don't know about that, guys. I don't know about that. You know, I don't know about these top ten. Let's go through the top ten here, real quick. Okay, 
10, Dwayne Allman. Awesome. Should be in the top 10. Joni Mitchell, 9? Sorry, Joni. I know you just celebrated her birthday, but Joni Mitchell, 9? Great songwriter. Great albums. Joni Mitchell, 9. B.B. King, 8? Um, which, that's like saying he's the best blues out of all of them. And then there's artists that are higher in this list than the blues. The Kings, Freddie King, Albert King. Um, you know, I don't know. You know, Nile Rogers, seven. Chic, awesome, but seven. Sister Rosetta Tharp at six. I'm going to leave that one up to you to decide if you think she should be in the top six. She was um, in the 1940s. Small body of work. Jeff Beck at five, I respect. Eddie Van Halen should be in the top four. Um, Jimmy Page, you know, I think it's time we lower him. We could put him in the we could put him in the 20s or the 30s or the 40s or the 50s, you know, or wherever else you want to put him at this point. He's been around for a long time on these lists. Good guitar player, but the best, just like Chuck Berry at two. Chuck Berry at two. Now, you know, Keith Richards is in the 20s. Is that a right spot for him? I don't know. Again, the question is raised. Is it about songwriting? Is it about soloing? Is it about the rhythm styles in which you play? I'm going to leave that one up to you. Um, do, 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 what do you think number one is? You know, number one? Number one is going to be Mr. Jim A. Hendrix, who always is number one on these lists. Um, you know... Jimmy's always number one, you know, talking with somebody at work. It's the question is, should Jimmy still be number one? I don't know. Should we move him? Stevie Ray Vaughan definitely should not be 20. And Stevie Ray Vaughan should definitely be in the list in the top 10. Um, Prince should be in the top 20. A lot of good guitar players, you know, a lot of guitar players on this list that you're going to want to just, if you get a chance, go through it yourself and read about it, you know. You know, a lot of artists we didn't talk about. Slash at 105. Billy Gibbons at 102. Okay. Billy Gibbons is a great, great, great player. Okay. Um, You know, my bloody Valentine Kevin Shields is at 67. And Gary Clark Jr. is at 209. Someone in God flesh is at 207. And again... Steve Hackett of 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 Genesis is a 216. Again, though, that's what they make these lists for. You know, they make them for opinions, and that's why we are here even to tell you this is our opinion. People might not, you know, agree. People might think Liz Fair should be higher. You know, Lou Reed at 89. Lou Reed's a really, really good player. Should he be higher? Should he be lower? I really don't know. Um, but I do know that I I think. Greg Jinn, if he is in this in this countdown, he definitely should not be higher than Andy Summer of, of of you know of the police, you know. But you know, Rolling Stone, you know, give it to him, you know, give it to him to for 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 putting Ry Cooter and Roy Buchanan in in this thing, Peter Green, you know, including Alex Lifeson of Rush. I mean, I think that's my problem is that Alex Lifeson of Rush is at uh, fifty eight. And if you go back to the very first 250 of Andy Summer, Alex Lifeson's just putting him up on a pedestal. So it's like, even I'm sure some of these guitar players who weren't asked would probably get upset with the placing. But then again, a lot of guitar players aren't doing this for some ranking in Rolling Stone. Um, you know, they're doing it just to do it because they enjoy it and they love to play. Um, just like us, we love to share music with you. If you have not yet, check out the little clips on the Beastie Boys, on um, um, we did one recently on the Talking Heads. Go to Jeff Healy. This is the reason why I, I did this little clip, if you haven't. Jeff Healy, Roadhouse fame, amazing, amazing guitar player, was because he's not even on the list. What's that about? So I had to do the little video to say, hey, let's show Jeff a little bit of uh, a little bit of coolness to um, you know all of that. Check out these shows I was talking about at the beginning of the show. Um, if you get a chance, go out there and check out the shows. Ask us. Ask us if we're going. Um, we may have some video footage to share um, when they come across. We are constantly looking for always something awesome and new. And appreciate anyone who would ever like to reach out and join the conversation. Got a lot of cool stuff coming around the bend. Um, but, uh, you know, 
lists. Let's leave it on this. Final note, lists. That's just what they are. They're lists and they're opinions. And that's what we're here to, to kind of answer to the opinions. If we did a list, people would give their opinions to us. So if you see a list, read it. You can be judgmental to it because that's what the lists are there for. They gave the lists out so that people could pick them so that we can have these conversations. Um, if you get an opportunity, follow us on the Hookup on Music on the Twitter and the Instagram. Uh, follow the Sadistic Penguin Studios YouTube channel and like and subscribe to that. It would be very, very, very cool. And also, please check out everything else that is on there that is awesome. Cool videos from movies and drafts and sports from everyone that I'm working with. I appreciate it so much. A lot of awesome music articles will be coming down the hatch on that um, on the uh, Sadistic Penguin uh, website by a lot of our awesome writers that we have. So please check those out. It's going to be really, really cool. But until next time, everyone else, I hope you had a good time. And until next week, keep on rocking and keep on rolling.